Great to be back with Dr. Hurd and beautiful wife Jerry and Pastor Andrew. And uh, I know some news, but I'm not supposed to say anything, so I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to be the spoiler. Oh, I love this church. I lift my hands, I lift my voice, like a river flowing, Lord, I will rejoice night and day, I bless your name, heavenly Father, I want to worship as my desire is to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's no place like your presence. So There's a mighty mountain of worship. There's a mighty mountain of worship. There's a mighty mountain of worship in me. Heaven is your throne, the earth is your footstool. Heaven is your throne, the earth is your footstool. Heaven is your throne, the earth is your footstool. And yet. Lord. 
you lift your hands and just love Jesus now? Just love Jesus. Oh, Lord, I want to love you more than I ever have before. Would you get my pulpit, please? You're so easy to adore. One more time, Lord, I want to love you more. I'm telling you, God's doing great things that inspire right at this moment than I ever had before. Let the healing virtue flow of God. You're so easy to adore. You're so easy to adore, Lord, I want to love. Let me just build your faith for a few moments here, okay? We had an incredible first service. People were saved. Many people were healed. And God is going to move in this place in a supernatural way. But I want to build your faith, and I'm just going to ask the musicians to kind of stay here if you would. If you got to go to the bathroom, you can be excused. Uh, but I, I want to talk to you. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> The playground, let me just talk about miracles, the atmosphere of miracles. Uh, The playground, thank you. The playground of the earth was designed uh, with natural boundaries that, that mark the outer limits of human possibility all right so for instance we could call the the speed of light we could call that the fence line and we could call the natural laws of nature the fence posts right and these fence posts though are constantly being repositioned because of scientific research And so every time these are repositioned, then what you have is you you establish a new borderline between the impossible and the possible. But at the same time, these lines, these fence lines, uh, still serve as invisible, impassable fences between the natural and the supernatural. So in the natural... These fence lines that you can't see, but they're there, you can't dig under it and get through it. You can't climb over it. It's impossible for you to do the impossible. But the good news is, in all of these invisible fence lines between the supernatural and the natural, between the impossible and the possible, God has put a gate in the fence. And his name is Jesus. And all power in heaven and in earth is given to that name. And that name is so powerful that if you would use it today, you would watch mountains remove in your life Sickness go, problems flee, because that's what that name has been given to us for. It not only saves us, it keeps us saved. It not only heals us, he keeps us healed. The other thing about that name that's so precious to me 
is that it doesn't matter how tired, weary, or downtrodden you are. You can still call that name and he'll answer. So don't sit here and waste this opportunity. You might have had the worst week of 22 this past week. You might feel distressed. You might feel stressed. You might feel oppressed. But if you would just open up your mouth and just whisper, Jesus, you would feel that gate open and leading your faith in from the natural to the supernatural and you would begin to see things that you've never seen before, hear things you've never heard before, feel the supernatural of the presence of God like you have never ever felt it. So use his name. It works every time. God orders your footsteps. God, the Bible says he prepares the works for you and I to do in advance. God is also working everything in your life out for your good. Now, I know that God has given us a free will, but I also know that it's God's will that he would orchestrate divine opportunities for you that you could never ever work out for yourself because nobody can orchestrate a divine setup or a divine opportunity for you like God can. God provides an on-ramp for miracles and he provides an off-ramp with temptation. Look, I don't know what your situation is today. I don't know what you're going through. But I do know that believe it or not, whether you like it or not, God has you right where he wants you. Because he's going to show his power that he can work in the worst of circumstances no matter what your situation is. He's your divine choreographer. He is sequencing, ordering every step that you're taking. I don't believe there are coincidences in the kingdom of God. I believe only providences. I don't believe there's no accidents. I only believe in divine appointments. I believe every twist of fate that happens in my life and your life is a part of the dance that was originally designed by God. Now listen to this. Miracles are beyond your ability. But they're not beyond your authority. I'm going to say that again. Miracles are beyond your ability. But they're not beyond your authority. You shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. Or you shall receive authority after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Take up serpents. Drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt you. Lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Cast out devils. These signs are going to follow every believer. That's why I said they're beyond your ability, but they're not beyond your authority. You're walking with the king. You have all power in heaven and in earth dwelling within you now. If you speak to the king of the universe in the morning, you will watch mountains remove in your life before the day is out. Because there's power in prayer. There's power in the name of Jesus. You ought to have a a unquenchable thirst to pray. You ought to have an unquenchable thirst for believing in him. How many feels prayer moving right now in your life? 
That's what's going on at Inspire. There is a revival happening right now in your family. You don't even realize it. There's a revival happening in your body, in your, in your mind, in your neighborhood, on your job. And it's all because somebody is praying. But they're not just praying to say they pray. They're praying in faith. And they're believing for strongholds to, to be brought down. They're walking in their authority. And they're telling the north to give up. They're telling the south to give up. They're pulling down strongholds. Is anybody here this morning? I'm telling you, this is your day to begin the rest of your life. When you have Jesus, think about it. When you have Jesus, the Lord of your life, the Lord of your life, not just a friend that sticks closer than a brother, but Jesus, the Lord of your life. When he's the Lord of your life, nobody is out of your reach. When he's the Lord of your life, nobody is out of your league. Who you been trying to get an audience with? Who you been believing for? What business have you been trying to grow? What family member have you been trying to get saved? What is going on? Where do you believe in God? I'm telling you, God can do absolutely anything. I don't care if you've been trying to meet Elon Musk. It can be done. Somebody ought to be praising right now because I'm just trying to stir your faith these things are in you. These dreams, these visions, this potential is in you. And I'm just here to stir you up today. Don't be intimidated by their power. You answer to a higher power. It might seem that they have what you want, but never forget, you have what they need. And if you follow Jesus long enough, they're going to start seeking you out because they're going to see the glow. They're going to feel that power. They're going to sense that glory. It's undefinable. It's intangible. But they're sensing something that they don't have. So you got to start expecting the impossible now because today we are going through the name of Jesus through the fence of impossibility into the realm of the supernatural. Somebody praise him right now. You follow Jesus long enough, royal officials will seek you out. Government officials will seek you out. The mayor will want an audience with you. The county commission will want an audience with you. That CEO will want to get to talk to you. That doctor will want to know what you got that I don't have. They're seeking you out and you don't even realize it. Why? Because you have something that they can't control. And you have something that their money cannot buy. I know you've all heard six degrees of separation. That was uh, uh, created in the 1960s by a physiologist named Stanley Milgram. And he conducted... A social experiment technically known, where's my water? I just got thirsty all of a sudden. I thought they said it was up here. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I just got a scratch in my throat. Thank you, hon. Okay, that's great. No, it wasn't their fault. It was mine. It was right there on the floor. Yeah. There's six degrees of separation. Oh, this is powerful, folks. This is powerful. How many in this place has been trying to get an audience with a certain person? Wave it, wave it, wave it. How many has been trying to get into a supernatural breakthrough, whether it's financially, in your marriage, whatever? Just, just wave your hand right now. I want you to... 
kind of put your thoughts together on this. So he conducted an experiment, experiment, technically known as the uh, small world phenomena. And his study concluded that at any time, an average, just an average of two people in the USA, one may be in Maine, the other may be in California, but they're only separated by six degrees. So he performed this experiment. He selected 160 people from Omaha, Nebraska, sent them, all chain, uh, sent them a chain letter. In that chain letter was the name Sasa, who was a stockbroker in Boston, Massachusetts. When that stockbroker got that chain letter in his hands, it was calculated how many steps were taken for that chain letter to reach the destiny of the stockbroker. And it was only six relationships, six steps. We are more socially connected now than we ever, ever have been. What would happen if you would bring God into your digital, social, connected world? You see, God knows everybody. <laughs> no, I'm just, I still don't think you're believing what I'm saying here. God knows everybody. And if you know God, who knows everybody, there's only one degree of separation between you and everybody else. God said, I'll open doors that cannot be closed. I'll lead you through waters. I will make crooked places straight. I'll take you before the people who you need to meet. <laughs> and here's the incredible thing about it. If I would simply believe this, I'm only one prayer away. That's the only degree of separation. That's the only degree, because I don't have to pull at the door. I don't have to pound on the door. All I have to do right now, and I'm just wondering in this service today, who is going to release their faith that way? I mean, who is just going to shake off the doubt and the fear and the intimidation and just stir up their own measure of faith? Who is that individual that's going to win the lottery of the kingdom of God here today? Who? Who is going to get that breakthrough? Who is going to get that revival in their family that you've been believing and praying God to God every day, every day, but you just won't quit? You just won't quit because you know that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall walk and not go weary and they shall run and not faint teach me lord teach me lord never to give up never to quit but to keep waiting keep waiting keep waiting keep waiting keep waiting because i know i've cast my bread on the water and it will come back to me good measure shake it together press down running over Oh, go ahead and praise him right now. Go ahead and give him glory right now. Huh. I, love, I love Acts chapter 8 because it shows a great revelation. It reminds you and I that there's nobody that's more exact in latitude and longitude than God. God tells Philip in the 8th chapter of Acts, he said, take, this, take the uh, desert road south from Jerusalem to Gaza. He goes down there because God had prepared a eunuch to receive the gospel. And he expounds the gospel to him just read it sometimes, it's beautiful. You just see that God is doing it and no man could make this stuff up, but God orchestrated this whole meeting. And all of a sudden, Philip says, look, here's some water. Would you like to be baptized? Says, yes, sir. So Philip baptized him 
<laughs> but when he come out of the water, he was ready to give Philip a hug, but Philip was already translated to another town. Azotus, where he preached the gospel. That's why I tell you, God is a God of the mountains. He's the God of the valleys. He's the God of the rivers. He's the God of the latitude. And he's the God of the longitude. And if we would obey his promptings, you could change the course of history in this world. I'm not worrying about a food short shortage. And the media is not dictating my joy. Oh, you got to hear me here. Because God keeps reminding me every day I wake up, I've started a good work in you, Lloyd. I've started a good work in you. I've started a good work in you. And I'm still working on you because I'm going to complete and I'm going to finish what I have started. <laughs> my God, some of us, well, I ain't going to say some of us. That wouldn't be nice. I'll just say some people are like Saul. They think the only prophet Samuel is dead. And so they turn to sorcery. They turn to the witch of Endor. They turn to the medium. And that's what a lot of people are doing right now. The media has become the new medium. And it's so full of doubt and fear and ugliness. Get back to God. Get back to the church. Get back to the word of God. Because God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm going to be with you even unto the end. That's all the news you need to no, he's got everything under control. <laughs> you can change the course of history. He knows everybody. And just think, in this world, there's over 7 billion people. And he knows every one of them by name. Every one of them. In fact, he called all the stars by their name. That's how great he is. That's how all-knowing and all-wise. <laughs> so over 700, 7 billion people in this world, if you took and lined them up in a single file, that single file would be more than a million and a half miles long. That's long enough to circle the equator 59 times, but God knows every one of them. And of all the billions of people in this world, he has no favorites. Of all the billions of people, he knows you. And he's not treating anybody better than you. And he doesn't want to heal anybody more than he wants to heal you. He doesn't want to bless anybody more than he wants to bless you. You understand you're not his orphan. You're his son. You're his daughter. And if you ask anything in his name, it shall be done. Hallelujah. Oh, I love what Matthew, uh, look, look at this. I love what Matthew, the 10th chapter says. And um, starting at the 29th verse, look at this. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And none of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head, look at, look at the comparison. He's saying, look, the sparrow falls to the ground just, but I, I see them all, I catch them. But I've got the very hairs of your head numbered. Wow. You see, the reason why we're reading about sparrows because the sparrow was the cheapest food in ancient Israel. So a lot of sparrows were sold. And they were sold by the smallest coin, which had the least value. But yet God said, none of them falls to the ground. I see them, I catch them, and I'm with them. So what's the translation from that for me? Here's what I get. God cares about the most minute details of my life. I'm never out of his care. He sees me. He hears me. 
Now look, when you choose to follow God, doesn't mean you're going to be immune from sickness. Doesn't mean you're going to be immune from all of these things. But he said, be of good cheer, I've overcome to the world. See, I don't know, there's a, there's a great young man of God. His name is Nick Wojcik. He was born without arms and legs. He's, but he surfs. And he keeps a pair of shoes in his closet. Do you know why? Because he said, I believe in mir miracles. Yeah. You know what he was saying? One of these days, God may decide to grow legs on me. So I'm never going to stop believing for my miracle. You see, let me close with this while you're getting ready to just enjoy God here. See, here's what my wife and I was talking about this week. Boy, she just spoke some great revelation to me. Talked about the prayer of faith, believe in God. Okay. It saddens me when I see people that come and they don't get that miracle. It's hard, I'm hard on myself. Not on God, I'm just hard on myself. I ask, did I believe enough? Did I, you know, did I, did, did I build their faith and stir their faith enough? And then she reminded me of Abraham and Sarah. They wanted a child all of their natural years to bear a child, and they could not do it. God waited until they were beyond their natural barren years. And then when Abraham's 90 or 95 years old and she's 85, he comes to them and says, guess what? Your prayer has been heard. Sarah's going to bear you a son. Oh, my. But here's the incredible thing. There must have been a pattern in Abraham's prayer life. Because the Bible says the longer he went without the miracle, the more his faith increased. You didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. You see, some of us aren't healed yet. But I'm not giving up for my miracle. I'm still believing. And every time the altar opens up, I'm coming down. Every time they pray the prayer of faith, my hands are going up. I'm never going to stop believing. Because there's something about the art of appreciation. After you've waited five years, 10 years, 20 years, 25 years, and all of a sudden that glorious moment comes and you know that you're healed, you can look back over all these years and say, Oh my Lord, I don't regret one mile. I don't regret one trial. I don't regret one prayer because it is my faith that is held on to the horns of the altar. I I claimed it, and I knew that my day would come. I appreciate it more than that instant miracle. So don't you be down on yourself, and don't you say, oh, I don't have enough faith. You sure do. You have enough faith. Because Romans 12 and 3 says he's given to everyone the measure of faith. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what is a measure? He said, it's enough. It's enough. You've got enough faith to open up your blind eyes. You've got enough faith to cast out cancer today. You've got enough faith to remove that tumor out of your body. You've got enough faith to heal your marriage. I'm telling you, this is your day. Stand to your feet and give him praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I had an experience last week, Pam and, Pamela and I were in uh, uh, te uh, Tennessee, we just came from Tennessee, we're ministering up there, and uh, went to uh, one night, called everybody that needed a miracle down, there was probably a hundred people that walked down, now you're going to like this because 
This was a fresh word that God just gave me, Jerry, last week. He just spoke it to me, I promise you. So all these people were there. And I remember ministering to two or three in a prophetic individual way. Oh, it was so powerful. Well, I'll tell you, this was kind of unbelievable. <laughs> this is really cool. I'm, I was ministering over on this side. And I said, uh, I looked at the pastor. I said, you're going to have revival here. And it's going to be athletes getting saved and, and uh, things like that. And, you know, some people responded and other people. Found out the pastor didn't even know this, but God knew it. I didn't. God knew it because God knows all. Remember, he knows everybody. And all of a sudden, I said, I, I see a vision of a, a baseball player. A vision of a baseball player. I've never seen that before. I said, uh, a vision of a baseball player. And I said, I said, it looks like he's standing on the pitcher's mound. And I and I I didn't have the faith to say this, so I just kind of underlined it. I said, he may be a professional. I didn't have the faith to say he was a professional because I didn't know, but I was being leaning towards that. But I said, whoever he is, God is completely healing his arm, his sh shoulder. Honey, you was there. You heard it. Wasn't it after service they told us, or was it? It was after service, I believe. The, one of the associates come up and brought this person up and said, uh, this was in a little town in Tennessee. He said, that person you called out tonight, that's my brother. He's a pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. He just had Tommy John surgery, the shoulder arm surgery. He said, I just texted him. He was at one of the college games for March Madness. He said, God healed you tonight. God said, you're healed. Do you understand the power of God? Remember, Jesus is the gate that opens, that gets you through the fence of the impossible. Jesus, his name, his name is higher than any other name. You just use it. So also that night, That night, they was all standing there, and all of a sudden, I began to pray, and God began to heal people. But I, Pam, Pamela and I didn't know it, but we had some very special friends in that service that night. Never knew anything about any physical condition. Now, this is what I want you to hear, because this is what God told me. But she was standing in that for a miracle that night. She didn't tell us. We didn't know what was going on. All of a sudden, we prayed. God did great things. The next day after we ended these two nights of meetings, I think she sent Pam a text or told us, be in prayer for me. That was our good friend that was in that altar for a miracle that we never had no idea God didn't show it to me kept it from me she said I'm, I went for a biopsy and I'll be getting the report back next Tuesday it would have been last Tuesday and I was just like I was like, I felt bad because I'm thinking, God, that's my friend. Why didn't you tell me that? Why didn't you show me that? <laughs> I would have loved. Because see, when you can tell somebody what's wrong with them, that just increases their faith. And that's why God uses me maybe to prophesy, to speak to two or three people, to build your faith. I don't have the spiritual bandwidth to prophesy to everybody. I'm not that spiritual. I'm not that good. 
But I was saying, God, this is our close friends. Why didn't you tell me that? Why didn't you show me that? And here's what he said, and this is for everybody to hear. He said, Lord, there are times when I won't show you something because there's nothing there. Because we got, you got the text three days ago from our friends that no cancer, no cancer, no cancer. <laughs> See, oh, oh, oh my, my. See, some of you are going to come down here today and you're going to say, oh, Lord, use them to call me out too much wrong. But I'm not going to do it. You know why? Because God said, I'm not going to show you something that isn't there. Just like blind Bartimaeus, the moment he leaped out of that ditch, Jesus said, what do you need me to do? He said, Lord, I want to receive my sight. He said, your faith has already made you whole. I believe there's going to be people miraculously healed and delivered. The moment you take that first step today, nothing there, nothing there. Oh, come on, give him praise right now. Now, they want me to turn the service to Pastor Steve, but I'm coming back. I don't want anybody to leave because if, I'll, if I have to stay an hour, I'll pray for everybody that wants prayer here today. Is that all right, Jerry? I'll pray for everybody that wants prayer because I'm going to believe what I told you I was going to believe with you. So, Pastor Steve, God bless you, my brother. We'll do this very quickly. Um, Prophet Lloyd is going to come right back up and minister and close out the service, um, however the Lord leads him to do that. But you know what our tradition and, and longstanding culture is at an, here is at Inspire Church, and that is to um, sow into our guest speakers. We do that because the Bible teaches us to do that. Amen. Bible tells us that when somebody sows into us of spiritual things, it is good, it is a healthy thing. It is a biblical thing to sow back into them material things. But today, I, I, my, my, I wanna encourage you, my prayer for us is that we go beyond just sowing an offering because it's our culture, it's our tradition. That was a powerful word released here today. Anybody believe in God that we're going into a season of miracles? I want us to sow generously, not just into Lloyd Bustard Ministries, um, which by the way, every penny, as you know, our tradition here, every dime given in this offering will go entirely to his ministry. But I, I want you to be sowing today in more than just Lloyd Bustard Ministries. I want you to sow into this word today. Does anybody else wanna enjoy a season of miracles in your own life? in your home, your family, amen. Ushers are serving you right now, come on. Um, let's just sing that as Pastor Lloyd comes back. You are great, you do miracles so great. No one else like you. 